Hello everyone, today we are going to take apart this Lenovo IdeaPad 100 series and we are going to replace the old hard drive with an SSD drive so in that process we are going to do a partial teardown of this uh, notebook and maybe we are also going to clean the uh, heatsink if it's needed so uh, let's get on with, with it so first thing we are going to start from the back of the unit and we need to remove all these uh, screws that are around and they are uh, normal Phillips head screws and we'll see which one uh, fits uh, better this one should do just fine In case you are wondering, the battery will not uh, go out, uh, you cannot remove the battery right now, so it's, uh, let's say, it's safe to disassemble the notebook first and remove the battery la later. Actually, there are uh, screws that hold this battery to the rear uh, side of the notebook, and to be safe and not do anything stupid when you try to upgrade this uh, notebook you have to remove the battery connector from the motherboard the power supply and that's uh, a connector that's on the other side of the notebook under the keyboard so you have to remove uh, some of the screws here that hold the keyboard then we are going to take the keyboard out then disconnect the battery and after that we can uh, work on this but because it's on this side, we can loosen up all the screws, so we can disassemble it completely. And now I'm going to use a bigger magnetized screwdriver, although my small one here is magnetized, it's not that powerful to take up the screws. And I'm going to use my trusty magnetic pad here, not to lose the screws. Also, when I take them out, usually I check if they are the same size because sometimes on this kind of notebooks you get different size screws and if you put one in a bad spot then you can damage something it can pierce out on the other side or it will not go in as it should well on this model it's all good because all the screws are of the same size and that makes it easier to work on and there you go all the screws are now out and now we are going to take it on the other side we are going to open the screen and now we need to take the keyboard out and there are a few methods but I'm going to try to pry it out first gently with this thing and you should start from one place If uh, you can't do that safely and without destroying it or leaving it full of marks, you can try something else. There is a plan B. You can put this on a side like that and use a screwdriver and uh, poke through one of these holes. This one here, this one, this one and and maybe this one but that's not sure but one of these and they should kind of push the keyboard out because they are the holding ones and I'm going to try to do that and let's see does it poke the keyboard out it doesn't want to okay so if the keyboard doesn't want to come out peacefully you are going to have to force it a bit so I'm going to use a very thin metal screwdriver and also the pry tool and the keyboard has some locking clips that are around there are two of them here two of them here and a few of them around so i'm going to start from the one side and one clip is around here and one is about here i'm going to put the screwdriver push it and depart the keyboard and i'm going to use the pry tool so and i'm going to try to make space and do something like that and now the keyboard is a bit pried up and you can see there is a clip there 
and now you have to keep this lift it up and try to pry it around the keyboard is flexible and it will bend and now you can pry it out and try to bend it to, uh, towards the interior to make it somehow squeeze it so the release clamps will uh, get out it's kind of a super annoying way to take a keyboard out but it's the single way you can uh, do this and to make matters worse they also use double sided adhesive tape so you need to overcome all that force of double sided tape and clips and take very good care because if this jumps out too hard or you pull it too hard you are going to break the ribbon cable here and now we can finally remove that annoying keyboard and it has this connector here you need to lift the lever up and you can release it and there's your flexible annoying keyboard and now you can see the locking mechanism it has these tiny holes and it has some small catches there and this is also glued on top here it has double sided tape on all that side so it keeps it very well there and makes it as you see annoying and I'm also going to remove the optical drive as it seems that uh, it kind of uh, it's sandwiched between the case and there is also this screw that seems to keep the rear part of the case in place so I'm going to remove that as well and there's the optical drive as if there is one left and yes we got this annoying seal here which we need to poke and bye bye warranty if we actually had one and there is another screw there a very tricky thing to open up so you need to take this out also and now you only need to use the force use the force look okay. there's no other way but try to use the force in a smart way otherwise you are going to end up breaking lots of stuff because this is not built with maintenance in mind it's kind of a one way you use notebook because that's how our consumer market is and now finally we can open it and there's the power connector of the battery and the battery is connected here and I'm going to try to take the cable out through here and here looks like it's a simple push-in connector yep that was it and now we have safely disconnected the battery and you can see the battery although not replaceable is replaceable but there is a lot of work to remove that I don't know what they were thinking when doing that and we finally get to access the motherboard and we can start working on replacing the hard drive and now it's a good opportunity also to replace the memory if you want to and clean the cooler and now to remove the drive it's easy you have four screws that hold the support and now you can remove this and I have to take the drive out and replace it with the SSD drive so you have to take these four screws out also 
and put them back to the SSD drive. Alright, and this goes in like that. And now we need to put the screws back. And now we are going to install the drive back, slide it back in. Perfect. And now we can put the screws that hold the support back. And now it's time to put it back, so you have to put the cover back on and don't forget to connect the battery and this is going to be a bit annoying again because you have to open this up and then you have to put this wire through here and kind of match this in the position that you need it to be. And I'm going to root this but first you need to connect the battery back so the battery is connected and put the wire here on the holder and place it there and now you can start pressing the case back and that should do it and now we can put the three screws back the one that uh, holds the optical drive but we need to insert the optical drive first okay All right and the secret screw that voice the warranty these three screws are the same type and the one from this side here and now we can put the keyboard back so I'm going to put the ribbon cable in and press the holder and it's now secured the keyboard will fix on the lower part first and then you are just going to clip it back into position and we are done with that because this is such a tricky machine before putting all the screws back you should do a quick checkup to see if it starts back on and if you can enter the setup if it's kind of working properly and entering setup is also tricky um, you have to press and hold F and key with F to key and then start it on and now wait and it goes into the setup otherwise on this model you are not going to be able to enter the setup without doing that uh, you can press delete F1, F2, FN plus F2 as they say in the manual or on the website but if you do not hold them pressed before you start it it will not enter setup and it's going to be frustrating because you are not going to be able to enter in uh, the boot configuration settings and then select uh, uh, booting up from your hard drive or uh, USB drive and installing the operating system and with all the screws put back it's now time to install a fresh new operating system on this and it's now ready for some extra speed from the new SSD drive.